So let me let me go back. Uh, I was I was writing about this the other day, so it came into my mind. I, was, I wanted to ask you about it. Was there ever a time when, you, along this path of, of getting better, uh, striving for the Olympics, and and for that matter, maybe it could be before you know you you got to skating. It could have been inline skating. It could have been some other part of your life. Just curious if you had a, a, a time period where you felt like you just didn't know where you were going and how you were going to get where you're going. If you thought you did know the destination, you just felt like you were kind of floating out in the water without any wind and mm -hmm. without any sense of which yeah, way to lost, go yeah, and yeah. feeling lost. You yeah, ever experienced that? Multiple times in my career. Um, early in my career, I felt it. Uh, later in my career, actually, oh nine. 2009 was one of my was one of my I, I was skating very well, but I wasn't getting any results like I wanted to, and so um, the biggest issue that I had was I, I hear that I heard this chatter amongst my group, amongst the international circuit, kind of just very quietly. Oh, he's getting too old. Mm -hmm. Oh, we know him too well. He always does this during races. So I was getting very predictable. Mm -hmm. um, but my performance was kind of stagnant since 06. And, but I had won 2008 World Championships. Um, but pre-Olympic year, in 2005 and in 2001, you know, pre those two games, I won all the World Cup races. Hmm. I kind of made my mark the year before let people know that I was very consistent. So I had this belief in my head that I had to do the same thing 2009. And I didn't. I went to World Championships and I had one of my... I was skating very well, but I didn't get the results I wanted. And so I finished the last World Championship race, just, and I felt like I didn't know what to do. Because I felt like my training that year was good, but I wasn't, I wasn't good enough. So more than anything, self-doubt started creeping in my head. Hmm. And the question of, can I still do this, and can I still make the podium? Am I still a contender? Am I still one of the best? And, and these thoughts are going on in your head. During races and after the race. During and so I left World Championships, not with a negative attitude, but with but questioning myself, which is not good as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Because when you start questioning, uh, if you don't have an answer right away, you're going to continue yeah. to question. And so I was searching for this internally. So I, this was in March um, 2009. And I said to myself, okay, I'm going to spend three months instead of going back home to Seattle, instead of going to uh, train in Salt Lake City where we were all training as a team, I'm going to take three months by myself. I'm going to move to Colorado Springs where the Olympic Training Center is mm -hmm. and I'm going to train in the mountains and just do the things that I know make me feel good as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So you kind of removed yourself. You so I removed solo. myself. I went back to mm. kind of this core training that... Sure, physiologically, it may or may, may not have made sense. Right. I didn't really care. I wrote my own training program. I didn't consult with any coaches. Um, and I said, if I can get through this three months um, and I do this, these things that I believe I need to do, or there's certain things I need to do during training that make me feel mm -hmm. like Apollo Ono, mm -hmm. um, then I'll go back to the program when I'm ready. And so uh, my, my coaches were like, sure, we'll, we'll give you a month. Right? We, 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 it's Olympic year. We want to see you earlier. We want to we help hone in your technique. And right. I said, I, I, this is more important than anything else. I need this time alone. And so I was times where, look, I was doing three-hour bike rides. It doesn't make sense for my sport, right? I'm, yeah. I'm a 41-second athlete. But I needed that time, I think, more than anything mentally and solo climbing these long mountains that mm -hmm. I used to do when I was a kid, you mm -hmm. know, training as a team. And that helped me um, kind of find what I wanted to do and why I was doing the sport. Was at times you, you get so obsessed with, I have to make the podium. I have to show that I'm the best. Uh, I have all this pressure riding on me. I was the previous Olympic champion. I won last year's world championships. I'm expected to win these races. Mm -hmm. And at a point in your career, you're going to say, you know what? None of that even matters. None of that matters because I'm not doing this sport to satisfy critics or satisfy this person or that person. Although my competitive nature wants to, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, 20 years from now, people are not going to talk about how I satisfied their, yeah. you know, it's going to be about how I can live with myself. 
And so it was very important for me at that stage to establish that inner confidence again and find that you know, I'm doing this sport because I love it and I still enjoy it and I still can be very good at it. But I can't be good at it if I don't enjoy it and, I'm still, and I don't love it. Um, and I think I was starting to fall into that trap of focusing strictly on the result rather than what the real process is of becoming an Olympic athlete. And that process is grueling, and it's tough, mm -hmm. and it's long, and sometimes it's very lonely. But there's an appreciation, I think, that I couldn't do in my earlier years as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And it took me 10 years to really realize that I can't control the outcome of a race all the time. And there's so many variables that change. The only thing that I can control is perhaps my preparation stage. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where I get the most enjoyment. And when I'm done competing after 2010, I don't know what's going to happen. But when I look, let's say it's 2011, uh, and I look back at my career and I say, man, what do I think about? What do I miss? I mean, my memories are not really of standing on the podium, of me running the, the last race. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about training. Is it going back to, to Colorado? It's going, it back, going back to Colorado. It's going back to yeah. when I was at my lowest. Yeah. And what did I do when I was at my lowest? You know, yeah. I, th I think those times is when... Those are, the, those, those are the true life lessons that I believe mm -hmm. are going to resonate with me that I'll right. tell my future kids someday, right. you know? Not so to, so you know. When, after, after Colorado and you went and you solo, and you kind of hung out by yourself yeah. and said, this is what I need to do to kind of find why I'm, why I'm doing this and what I really enjoy about doing this. Yeah. I don't mean to put words in your mouth if this isn't true. And, and in that time, that, or right after that, did those, did those thoughts of uh, self-doubt start to reside? They were still there but not as frequent. Um, and I, and a, as an athlete, I learned to accept that perhaps that's a natural proponent of being a veteran on the team, right? When I talked to some other athletes who were older and who'd done well, and I said, you know what? Um, I, I basically had to accept that my mind will wander and then just let it go, you know? So just kind of not pay attention to it? Is it is or almost not like not believe your own mind? I think there was times? two ways of just going about it. One was blocking it out and yeah. pretending it's not there, yeah. which didn't work, or accepting that those thoughts will come in my head, but just let them go and kind of just just kind of just have a more easy way about it, you know. Yeah. And then by the time I got to Vancouver, I had a lot of pressure, um, but I was enjoying what I was doing because the pressure was off my shoulders in in my eyes mm -hmm. because I look I had won five medals. Um, people had thought and wanted me to win. NBC has chosen had chosen me to be a star marquee athlete. They were going to do all these, these you know, it's like Apollo Olympics time, like for like mm -hmm. you know a week and a half. And so they spent all this time putting all this stuff together. But at the end of the day, it was just me against me, you know. And um, I can't change how this 18 year old Korean athlete's skating. You know, this guy grew up watching me skate, and now he knows me so well, and he's faster than me, right? I can't control that he's faster than me. Um, but I can control how I race, you know, so... Uh, the, kind of the, the idea that competition is really within, it's not... It was totally within. External. It was totally within, yeah, it was totally within. And, and, you know, short track at some degree is definitely external, but at that stage in my life, it was more important for me to, uh, to realize and recognize that the sport is going to be here whether I'm here or not, right. but um, I have to enjoy it for why, why I'm here. And yeah. if I don't, and I get so wrapped up in only the results, then it's crazy. Yeah, know? it is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You have to enjoy being in your body and competing. So final question. At the ripe old age of 30, we were talking about this earlier, so I'm going to bring it back to you. And um, I think you, you said the word 18. So we're changing. I'm changing. You're changing. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all getting older. What, what's the, what's the, been the biggest uh, you know, challenge? What... So you're getting older, your body is changing. What's the biggest challenge that you... Uh, recovery. Recovery. Recovery is one, and my body doesn't process food like it used to. Those two things alone. Um, I can still train hard. Mm -hmm. I can crank a workout like I did back then, but it takes me much longer to recover. <laughs> when I was 18, I seriously, I could eat what... I used to eat 3,600 calories for breakfast. For <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I would like loaf of bread, butter, like eggs, oatmeal, 
everything sausage bacon it was disgusting right it didn't matter it just really didn't matter and was, i wasn't it's like gone then by the next it was gone in three hours yeah. i was hungry i was like oh i need a cookie this is crazy you know and when i turned 25 that changed actually but now i notice even a bigger change um and so i, I still very much enjoy training i don't train as hard as long but uh, when I do, it, re- it, re- it requires me, you know, a lot more rest. I don't do as much volume. I mean, is, it, is it hard to accept the fact that you can't eat the way you used to or you can't recover as fast? Is, it, is there something in, like... It's hard to accept like, because sometimes, sometimes I forget. Yeah. And so I will eat like the way I used to. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, God, what happened? <laughs> these, I can't even button these jeans. Oh, yeah, I'm not 18. I think these jeans shrunk in the wash. Wait, I haven't washed them. Okay, that's a problem, you know? <laughs> this shirt's too tight. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I have I have like three I have like three layers of clothes. I have clothes for when I'm heavy, clothes for when I'm fit, and clothes for when I'm in the middle. <laughs> uh, I just separate the, the you know it depends on which season it is. The, the final words of advice from Apollo. <laughs> Don't change your training. Don't just change your wardrobe. Change your wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Get a new tailor. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it was it was hard. It, it, it's hard to accept, but it, to be expected, I guess. Um, it's like, what can you do about it? Uh, you know, I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. Well, you know, I'm not quite as old as you are. You know, I'm kind of, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, you're, you're, yeah, you're like, I, mean, I haven't I, quite gotten there, so I don't I, have that ex- same experience. I've got like eight as years as on you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, he's, 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 but let me tell you from experience, Peter. Okay. What, <laughs> what, what can I expect coming along? <laughs> it's rough. It's, it's really rough. rough. <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> All right, we're having way too much fun here. So thanks, man. It's always yeah. great hanging out with you. Appreciate you doing this with me. Absolutely. Always, always great talking with of you. Of course. Yeah. Apollo Ono. Yeah. Thanks, man.